So, meine Damen und Herren, ich hatte heute Morgen äh, was sehr Schönes ähm, in meiner Timeline. Wir haben ja mal bei Sim Racing Dan uns äh, ab und an mal ein Video angeguckt und der hatte ein äh, Lenkrad vorgestellt, was ich mir sehr, sehr gerne mal ansehen möchte. Weil ich gerne wissen möchte, äh, was da so hintersteckt. Das sieht sah nämlich sehr ähnlich zu einem anderen Wheel aus. Das ist aber ganz schön laut, du. Ui, das sieht aber sehr schick aus, das Spiel. Ui, ist das ein schönes Wheel. Oh, mit Lovely Dash, nice. Introducing the VRS PG Pro from VPG Sim. It's the result of further research and development to improve the well-known VRS PG Sim Racing wheel. Thanks to the hard work of Mike, Manny and their team, you have a wheel that's been fine-tuned based on feedback from both the sim racing community as well as actual race car drivers. Drawing its design cues obviously from the iconic Porsche 911 RSR wheel, I will later compare it with Grid's licensed version of this same wheel and one I use quite frequently. The oh. VRS PG Pro design is versatile, fitting for both GT and LMP style race cars. Siehst du, daher kannte ich das. Ich war mir doch irgendwie, habe ich das schon mal gesehen. Ah ja, mit Porsche im Zusammenhang. Das sieht richtig gut aus. One key upgrade in the Pro version is the revamped weight distribution, which VPG says gives you more detailed force feedback. I put this to the test later when I talk about driving performance. The new grips are a game changer. Developed with insights from real life racers, VPG says they've nailed the comfort factor. I'll give you a deeper dive into this in the driving experience later on. In terms oh, das ist aber mal eine Ansage. Also wenn du schon als Hersteller sagst, so, wir haben richtig krasse Grips äh, und das ist wohl... <lacht> okay, das ist äh, schon mal ein strammes Statement. In terms of build, we're looking at top tier materials, including a sleek forged carbon fiber plate and high quality components used throughout. Now throughout this review, I'll also cover its build quality key features, setup and performance, and I'll also share how it stacks up against competitors like the Grid Porsche RSR and Picorni LMPH wheel. By the end, you'll have a clear idea of its pros and cons, helping you decide if the VRS PG Pro should be your next sim racing wheel purchase. Hmm. Unboxing the VRS PG Pro is an experience in itself. The industrial grade hard case it's delivered in is a very cool experience. And wow. Wow, wow. Okay, das ist aber Unboxing mal auf ein ganz anderes Level, wenn du so ein Hardcase dazu kriegst. Wow. Doubles as a handy storage solution when the wheel's not in use. Kudos to VPG for including this. Ooh. Upon opening the case, I was genuinely impressed. Photos simply don't capture this wheel's essence. It's perfectly crafted and the design mirroring its real life counterparts gives you that thrill as if you just lifted a wheel straight from a race car. The 300 mm diameter feels just right for a wheel of this style. Its main body and rotary knobs are crafted from 6061 aluminum. The front boasts a 5 mm forged carbon fiber plate paired with injection molded rubber grips that strike a balance between firmness and comfort. Although the forged carbon fiber looks great, I'm personally not a fan of it, so it would have been nice to see the option with this wheel to opt for a standard carbon fiber as well. Flipping it over, you'll see a shifter and clutch paddle with an extra third set of paddles for additional inputs. Ui, the wheel good. hub on the back is compatible with 70mm wheelbase systems such as SimiCube or the Fanatic Podium Hub, among others. I found it straightforward to attach the my SimiCube QR, though be aware it doesn't come with the mounting hardware. The back of the wheel also features a secure 4-pin to USB connection. You can plug this directly into your PC if it's within reach. Alternatively though, I'd suggest using a powered USB hub close to your wheelbase as I did. The front displays a crisp 4.3 inch full core screen, which is safeguarded by 3 mm Gorilla Glass. Wow. The illuminated APM 6.5N buttons, available in white, blue, or custom colors for an additional fee, provide a satisfying click and clear indicating activation. 
Additionally, the automotive grade Elma encoders are of superior quality. I must highlight the shifter and clutch paddles. Their robust and tactile feedback from these shifters is particularly oh, das sieht super schön aus. Die sind so richtig leicht und angenehm. Ui. noteworthy. I'll delve deeper into this when discussing driving performance. In summary, the VRS PG Pro exudes both sturdiness and quality. Every detail has been meticulously considered and it genuinely feels like a high-end product. Considering it's priced at just over $1700 US, it meets and even surpasses my expectations. Okay, der Preis ist natürlich sehr sehr stramm, ne, mit äh, was sind das in Euro? Keine Ahnung, 1.6. The VRS PG Pro is decked out with plenty of inputs. It boasts 12 illuminated push buttons and four rotary encoders up front, complemented by two more on each side of the wheel, optimally positioned for mid-race adjustments. Notably, das wisst ihr, der Witz an der ganzen Sache ist, ich habe jetzt auch zwei von diesen Daumenencodern. Ich weiß aber gar nicht, was ich da rauflegen soll. Though these encoders don't double as push buttons, unfortunately. Dominating the center is a sleek 4.3-inch integrated Vocor screen. While it is crisp, I think a 5-inch screen would have been a tad better, especially for those who might find reading smaller text difficult. That said, weil man beim Fahren ja auch immer so viel liest. Kannst ja Hörbuch, kannst ja ein Buch aufmachen, ein E-Book. It worked well for me. Above the screen, a row of RGB illuminated rev light LEDs stands out. These LEDs can be configured via SIM hub to respond to any in-game telemetry. It's worth noting that these LEDs are a touch smaller than those on some competing wheels such as the Grid RSR. It's more of an observation than a critique though. There's also a four-way funky switch in the wheel center, uh -huh. making menu and black box navigation a breeze. Despite its compact look, using it with or without gloves was hassle-free. Okay. While it doesn't rotate for incremental adjustments, das freut übrigens Andreas gerade, wenn er das äh, hört, dass er das nicht drehen kann, weil das sind nämlich nicht so Dinge, die Andreas sehr gerne macht. It does have a press feature and directional inputs. Hm. I personally would have preferred a seven-way funky switch for an even richer navigation experience. Its central placement does necessitate lifting a hand off the grip to use, but that's a minor trade-off for most, including myself. At the rear, the wheel is complete with magnetic paddle shifters, dual clutch paddles, and a bonus set of paddles that are customizable to your preferences. Das finde ich richtig geil. Das, das hätte ich auch gerne äh, noch diese extra, ähm, die zwei extra. Das würde ich sehr schön finden, weil das sind so Knöpfe, die ich glaube ich auch benutzen würde, aber ich weiß immer noch nicht, was ich hier rauflegen soll. Ganz ehrlich, darüber müssen wir uns wirklich mal unterhalten. Weil bei mir ist mein halbes Lenkrad ist leer, da ist nichts drauf. At the top, making single finger operation effortless. Of all the recent LMP style wheels that I've tried recently, including the Picorni LMPH and Grid RSR, the shifter paddles here top the list. They convey a robust tactile feedback, albeit a tad louder than say the grid shifters, it's not a deal breaker for me but worth noting. Their size felt right, adding to the comfort during usage, and they're adjustable to suit different preferences. While the dual clutch paddles felt sturdy, they do demand a firm press. They may not be my top pick compared to the other wheels mentioned, but some might appreciate their increased resistance. Setting up and configuring the VRS PG Pro wheel is streamlined thanks to its full compatibility with SimHub. For those who are already accustomed to adding LED profiles and dash templates in SimHub, the process will be very intuitive. But if you're new to the scene, don't worry because VPG provides a user da wird aktuell sehr viel getestet. Wow. friendly manual to guide you through the process. Personally, I stuck to the default profiles on the wheel and just tweaking the brightness settings as well as changing dash templates, standard procedure for any Volcor display. In terms of inputs and features, this wheel does not skimp. It offers everything you expect from a wheel in this price bracket. Plus, with SimHub compatibility, enthusiasts can tailor the settings to their exact preferences. Connecting the wheel to your PC is best done via a suitably powered USB hub, especially if your PC is positioned quite a distance from the wheel. Just a heads up here, not all USB extension cables work well with this wheel. I quickly realized this when I tried an extension cable that I had from Turn Racing that didn't deliver the adequate power for this particular wheel. Ja, das ist immer wirklich ein großes Problem mit My dem solution. Strom bei, bei den äh, Gerätschaften. Also bei mir zum Beispiel war es so, ich musste mir damals einen einzelnen USB-Hub nehmen, der nur dafür da war, dass mein Wheel lief. Was then connecting directly to one of the powered USB hubs 
which sit behind my monitors. One piece of feedback here would be the addition of a power injector box, similar to those that come with grid wheels or the op- Wow, das ist ja richtig cool. Oh, das ist richtig geil. So was würde ich sehr feiern, wenn das mehr Leute haben. Optional one that came with Percorni's LMPH. Cool. It ensures you can then position your wheel and then establish another connection back to the power source as well as your PC. That said though, VPG's approach of requiring just one cable connection if you have a powered hub reduces cable clutter, which is definitely a plus for a sim racer. Let's dive into one of the most crucial aspects, the wheel's performance and driving experience. Starting with the weight, it felt distinctively different compared to other wheels that I've used. The VRSPG's weight distribution let me sense finer details in the force feedback. This deepened connection okay. made me feel more in tune with the car. Now the grips easily among the best I've handled. They're solid yet soft, perfectly shaped for maximum comfort, and there's a subtle indentation at the back that aligns just right. They felt tailor-made whether I was driving with or without gloves. While I have a slight preference for using Maradness gloves for the extra grip and cushioning, the wheel's non-sticky, soft texture meant that I had zero discomfort without gloves, even during prolonged race sessions. Wie kann man denn Griffe so äh, loben? Also feiern. <laughs> es sind Griffe. Immersion-wise, this wheel nails it. Especially with LMP-style cars, it seamlessly blends into the virtual cockpit. The integrated display and rev light replicate the real thing, enhancing the entire experience. If you haven't tried a wheel like this before, it might just become a staple in your collection. I've already raved about the paddle shifters, and for good reason. The gear shifting is both satisfying and enjoyable, with each paddle perfectly positioned for intuitive use. Engaging with the knobs and buttons was smooth sailing. The layout mirroring real-life designs prioritizes user-friendliness and ergonomics. Even amid intense racing moments, toggling switches and pressing buttons was effortless. I also gave the wheel an audio stress test no headphones, sound off, and cranked up the force feedback. The result? Absolute silence. No creaking, no strange noises, reinforcing its robust build. In conclusion, driving... So was kommt aber meistens auch immer erst später, wenn man sie länger benutzt und das Material ein bisschen arbeitet. Ne? Am Anfang sind natürlich die Schrauben alle sehr, sehr fest oder alles ist sehr fest. With this wheel is fantastic. It's high performing, immersive, and ergonomically comfortable. What more could any sim racer enthusiast ask for? For those of you evaluating the VRSPG Pro, you're probably also considering other similar wheels. While I haven't tested every option out there, I've had hands-on experience with two notable competitors, the Grid Porsche RSR replica wheel and Picorni's debut pre-assembled wheel, the LMPH, both of which I've recently reviewed. Price-wise, the VPG nestles between these two. So how does it stack up though? While the VPG is in my view worth the slight cost bump over the LMPH, its buttons feel and appear more superior, and while I favor its paddle shifters, I'll admit that the LMPH shifters are also commendable, making this a very tight race. The VPG wheel grips outshine the LMPH in terms of comfort, though grip preference can be very subjective. Okay. One feature I find lacking in the VPG is the addition of a 5-inch screen which is present in the LMPH which would significantly enhance its visibility and use. Yet in a head-to-head -head comparison between the VPG SIM wheel and the LMPH, I would lean towards the VRSPG Pro. Now when it comes to the... I think that this is optisch a bit abgerundeter, this is this wheel here. <clears throat> it's a bit abgerundeter. Pricier grid Porsche RSR wheel at around $2,200 US. This here is so... Mm. It's somewhat in a league of its own. It's not just reminiscent of the Porsche RSR wheel, it's the sole officially licensed Porsche replica of that wheel for sim racing. So if authenticity tops your list, the grid wheel is your closest match to the real thing. Grid macht wirklich optisch, also ich habe sie nie in der Hand gehabt, muss ich dazu sagen, aber Grid macht wirklich sehr, sehr schöne Wheels, ne? Also kann man schon nicht äh, anders sagen. Considering inputs, features and build quality, it's still my top choice, setting aside the Porsche branding. However, for those who are more inclined towards a premium LMP or GT style sim racing wheel and hope to stay under the $2,000 mark, the VRSPG Pro from VPG Sim emerges as the clear winner. Thank you for joining me for this review. 
As always, if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. It certainly helps recommend my content and grow the channel. If you've not already subscribed to the channel while you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. If you have any questions or feedback for me, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Until the next one, stay safe and enjoy your racing. Dankeschön. Also schon schick. Aber für 1.7? 1.7 ist natürlich schon äh, knackig, ne? Also das ist schon mal eine Ansage für einen Wheel. Ich habe jetzt gerade, also aktuell bei meinem Mercedes Wheel ist mehr als die Hälfte an Tasten ist einfach frei, wo nichts passiert. Ich habe gar nicht mehr so viel da drauf, weil ich auch gar nicht weiß, wofür so. Also ich stelle nichts um beim Fahren. Also ich wüsste wirklich, ehrlich gesagt, so aus dem Kopf nicht, was ich damit machen sollte, wollte, könnte.